Well, hi there. Not long ago, we covered the Vinegaroon, also known as the Whip Scorpion, which is the freakiest looking creature in the world, to which the tailless Whip Scorpion said, hold my tail, because this might actually be an even freakier looking harmless alien nightmare beast. These are very closely related to their tailed acid spraying cousins, but where the Vinegaroon is long like a lobster, these are short like a crab. They have most of the nightmare appendages of the Vinegaroon, like the chelicerae, antenniform front legs, and claw-like pedipalps, but they lack the tail and the acid. How do they compensate? with even crazier antenniform legs and possibly even more insane looking claws. And instead of finding them on the ground or in a hole where a giant claw monster might not seem so scary, these guys tend to climb and hang out on the side of trees and rocks so they can say hi right at face height. It's a wide awake nightmare. Which of the two is more terrifying? The Vinegaroon or the Tailless Whip Scorpion? Why don't you let me know what you think down in the comments? The reality is that Vinegaroons make awesome pets that are delightful, as long as you're bigger than a cricket. So is the tailless crab nightmare also a good pet? And is it the best pet wispy-legged claw-jawed tree alien for you? To help you figure this out, we are going to score the giant tailless whip scorpion based on our five categories, which are handleability, care, hardiness, availability, and upfront costs. When it comes to handleability, we give the tailless whip scorpion a score of four out of five. But to be honest, nothing about this creature screams that it is okay to hold. I'm sorry, but if your hands were armored claws and your lips were more armored claws, I would probably be reluctant to hang out with you. Hopefully I would give you a chance. And if you can look past those claws, and the other claws, and the giant wispy leg antenna, and their other generally disconcerting details, you will find that they are incredibly pleasant beasts indeed. Or at least so I've been told. Because right now, this will be the first time I have ever handled a tailless whip scorpion myself. And um, I'm looking right into the face of the beast. It's a monster. So, here we go. Hello. Well, here she is. And I will tell you, these are very unlikely to bite or scratch. Uh, they do have... Whoa, that is horrifying. They do have a magical ability, which is called teleportation. They don't truly teleport, but they can move for short distances extremely fast. And that was my first experience with it. And something to look forward to now that I got that out of the way. But their little tarsal claws with which they hold on very well. They're not gonna scratch you with those. They're not gonna bite you with those chelicerae. If you really, really agitate one, they could pinch you with their little pedipalp claws, but that's not normally an issue. Like I said, they're very good at holding on with their tarsal claws and you can feel them, but they're not gonna do you any damage. They don't tail whip or drop their tails since they don't have any tails. They're big enough that they're not super fragile, but they're also long and wispy. And so you've just gotta be careful that you don't accidentally pinch any of their ginormous, long, skinny appendages, you know, in, in your hands or against objects or in the enclosure when you put them back in. So that is probably the biggest risk. They won't hurt you, but you certainly are a big scary giant that could hurt them in a myriad of ways. So just handle them how you would want a big scary giant to handle you, and handling should go great for everyone involved. Except your mother-in-law, she'll hate this. When it comes to care, we give the tailless whip scorpion a score of five out of five. Use an enclosure that favors vertical space because these guys do like to climb. I would recommend a backdrop, like maybe the one that we made in this video. And that would be great for these as they tend to hang out on vertical surfaces. Cork bark and cork rounds are also good as they can provide a climbing surface that won't mold and isn't heavy, so it isn't likely to crush or trap them. Generally, make sure no cage furniture could fall on them, especially if it is heavy. 
You will need a good lid as these guys do climb. And humidity is also very important for the more tropical species. The, and these are some of the most common ones you're gonna find in the hobby. Use a few inches of eco earth or a similar substrate that can hold some humidity and mist them regularly. They tend to drink droplets. And, and so uh, you're gonna want droplets on the surfaces where these guys are walking so they can drink. And it's also important to keep the humidity up. That said, you don't wanna spray so much that the substrate gets waterlogged. It's sort of like a crested gecko. You're spraying so they have something to drink, so the humidity is high, but not so it's just soaking wet in there. That actually can lead to major problems. You could even lose your tailless whip scorpion as a result. A small water bowl is also a good idea. They may come down and drink. Don't make it super deep or super big where they could end up drowning in it. These guys do eat insects, which is really the only downside to their care. So you will need some appropriately sized insects like crickets and, and roaches, but they only eat a few each week. So buying just a handful will be plenty. They also generally do well at room temperature. If your room is very cold, a heat pad on the side of the tank controlled by a thermostat may be necessary. I stress on the side because arthropods tend to burrow to escape the heat. And if it is hotter underground than above, they may end up cooking themselves. That just isn't something they would ever encounter in the wild, and they don't always figure it out in time. If you find a population of these that come from the site of a volcano, this may not be an issue. Otherwise, don't put the heat pad on the bottom. This specific tailless whip scorpion belongs to our friend Russ from Aquarimax Pets. And I want to pause here to give him some time to talk to you about what it is like to care for these awesome invertebrates. So Clint asked me to tell you a little bit about what it's like to own a tailless whip scorpion. I actually got this specimen captive bred when she was so small that she fit with two other siblings in a two ounce deli cup when she was shipped to me. And I was able to watch the entire process of, uh, you know, growth and development. It was quite amazing when, when they were really small, they were eating springtails and wingless fruit flies and eventually graduated to small crickets. And I, I watched them uh, go to the point where now they'll take adult crickets. They prefer prey that is about the same size as their pronotum. So a cricket, you know, it just, just about fits in that, that space. So a roach of that size is pretty good too. They, they don't tend to eat things like uh, mealworms. Uh, they don't find those very attractive and mealworms will bury it in, instantly into their substrate anyway. So those aren't really good prey items for them. So things like crickets, mealworms, uh, sorry, crickets and, and roaches that will crawl around uh, are, are good items. One of the things that I love about them is how otherworldly they are. And uh, when I give uh, presentations about various arthropods, this is always one of the big showstoppers. Uh, because they're just so fascinatingly different from anything else you'll encounter. Except, you know, a vinegaroon shares certain characteristics with them. Uh, so I love the fact that they're otherworldly. I love the fact that they are harmless. And as you can see, quite docile. They are a little shy, so you have to be very, very careful as you move around with them. But they're definitely worth it. And uh, just a really fun and bizarre pet that reminds you that we share this planet with a lot of very fascinating beings. Thank you, Russ. If you don't already, please go subscribe to Aquarimax Pets. There's a link to their awesome channel in the description. And Russ and I actually just recently did a video about another rad arthropod, and you can find that over on his channel. I wanna take just a moment to pause and say thank you to all of our rad fans and stinking rad fans. And also to mention a really cool story, which is that this tailless whip scorpion comes to us from Russ. And Russ has actually been a longtime patron of our channel. And that's actually how we first became aware of Russ and Aquarimax Pets. And now here we are doing videos together, checking out his incredible animals. And so one of the big perks of being a patron of Patreon, oh, teleportation, that's not a perk. But we get more opportunities to communicate with each other and, and just to talk and get to know one another and it can lead to awesome things like this. So please consider checking out our Patreon. It does a lot for us and we try to do a lot for you also to pay you back. When it comes to hardiness, we give the 
giant whip scorpion a score of five out of five. This is honestly a very long lived and hardy species as long as you provide it what it needs and you don't let it get too wet in the enclosure. Females can live far longer than 10 years and males maybe just a bit under 10 years, but that's a really long time for an arthropod. This is a pretty solid one, especially if you get them captive bred. You know, you may run into some issues if you're getting an import, but arthropods tend to do a little bit better as imports than say most reptiles. When it comes to availability, we give the tailless whip scorpion a score of three out of five. These are available online most of the time less often at expos and rarely at pet shops. There may be some seasonal fluctuation in availability, both for captive bred and wild caught individuals. So keep that in mind as well. When it comes to upfront costs, we give the tailless whip scorpion a score of five out of five. The whip scorpion itself is inexpensive. The enclosure also can be relatively inexpensive. There are a lot of really awesome options available for less than $100. That would be just incredible enclosures for these guys. You're going to need some substrate, some cork, uh, you know, flats and rounds potentially. I'd recommend some Gorilla Glue like you saw in our video. A small water bowl and a spray bottle. Unless you need a heat mat and a thermostat, that's it. And this is why we give the Tailless Whip Scorpion an overall score of 4.4 out of 5. And as it turns out, that is the exact same score we gave their tailed cousin. I've kind of been moving away from doing head-to-head -head videos as they're just not as popular as videos like this one. But let me know if you would like to see these two put cephalothorax to cephalothorax in the future. If what you want is a decently sized invertebrate that lives a long time, is easy to care for, looks super scary, but is not a vinegaroon, then the tailless whip scorpion might be the perfect pet invertebrate for you. As always, like and subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon. She knows. She knows. Clever girl. She makes you earn it. Shoot her! No, I would never. <laughs> I did use that one in a Dave Kaufman video, though. <laughs> Chandler and I climbed inside of an, a cage in the abandoned zoo. Oh, jeez. And, uh... The cage had a little door between the two enclosures. <laughs> Chandler was pretending to be like a chimpanzee or something in there. And I was pacing like a tiger. And then Chandler That's came scary. through and he grabbed me and he pulled me through the door that's in between the two enclosures and I'm holding on to the side and I yelled, shoot her! <laughs> <laughs> Dave lost it. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. <laughs> All right. I did that. Five categories, which are handleability. Oh, geez. That is not at all right. As always. Oh, as always, like and subscribe. <laughs> Hope to see you real soon. Bye.